Hello everyone, my name is Manuel de la Torre, hola. I work on the Perseverance Atmospheric Station. I also work on Curiosity's uh, Atmospheric Station. And I've been involved in both cases with a full development and uh, with the operations. In the recent years, most of that, my time has been working on data, analyzing data from the Curiosity rover that are sent down by the Rover Environmental Monitoring Station, that's REMS. And in the future, once we land with Perseverance, I hope to be able to also look at the data from META, the Mars Environmental Dynamics Analyzer. That is the environmental station for uh, Perseverance. The Earth itself had a very different atmosphere four and a half billion years ago. It was probably purplish, and the ocean has a different color, or had a different color, and all of that was simply because the atmosphere did not have oxygen. They needed, or our own Earth needed, um, the, the work of cyanobacteria, we think, to transform the existing atmosphere that at the time was methane into oxygen. It took millions of years to do this transformation and once it happened the bacteria that may have existed before all died poisoned by this oxygen and a new type of life had to emerge. From that life we um, we are descendants of what happened at the time. Um, the interesting thing is that even after the Earth's atmosphere uh, made this transition into an oxygen-rich atmosphere, our own planet has been very different. Depending on changes in the composition of the atmosphere, it has been warmer, such that there were periods where there was no ice at the poles. It has been cold, where we think that the whole Earth was covered in ice, like a snowball. They, call, they talk about the snowball Earth. And we've had uh, the cl climate and environment that we do have now. So when we go to other planets, we're actually looking at different possibilities that the atmosphere on those planets or, me, or on, our own, or on our own Earth may offer. Think that um, Mars might be an Earth of the future where the atmosphere has evaporated and the water has also disappeared and the atmosphere has become very thin. There is still some atmosphere, but not as thick as on Earth. Um, you can think of Venus as an, uh, some different version of what Earth could have been in the past with a very thick atmosphere with very high pressures. Or Titan as well, um, which uh, right now has a methane-rich atmosphere, which is pretty much what I just said that the Earth had in the past. But because Titan is very far from the Sun, is not as hot as the Earth was um, four and a half billion years ago. To explore and study all these phenomena on the on the other planets, we essentially built pretty much like the atmospheric stations that you do have here. You bring thermometers, you bring uh, to measure temperatures, barometers to measure pressure, you bring anemometers that measure the wind speed, you bring uh, hygrometers, some uh, something that measures um, water vapor content or relative humidity in the atmosphere. We are also carrying um, sensors to measure how much solar sun radiation um, makes it into the surface and how much thermal radiation or heat is radiated back from the surface as well as how much the solar radiation is reflected back. All of these pieces of information tell us what is happening right now on a different planet how is the planet's atmosphere re reacting to all of these agents? And we also had to prepare all these sensors to work at very different temperatures from Earth. So we have to measure at temperatures which are in Kelvin uh, between 270 at daytime. That's uh, low, uh, a little bit below freezing or sometimes 240 and maximum temperature, temperature depending on the season. And at night they can drop by about 80, 60 degrees Celsius, um, which in Fahrenheit, I think it comes to about 120 degrees Fahrenheit difference. So you need to develop sensors and electronics and instruments that can work at very different temperatures. On top of that, because the Martian atmosphere is very thin, it's as thin as the Earth atmosphere is at about 30 kilometers altitude, that is uh, three times as high as airplanes fly. If you remember, 
uh, the explorers that do go to Mount Everest, they do need masks because there's very little atmosphere there to breathe. Imagine going four times as high as the Mount Everest. Well, that's Mars. It's very cold, temperatures change a lot, if you have clouds at those altitudes or any water vapor is very thin, so thin that those clouds you can barely see, the, the amount of water can barely be measured, so an atmospheric station on Mars has to be able to see all of these things that are barely visible on Earth. Um, so it was a lot of work. Sometimes you have to develop those things again as schedule changes. Uh, there was a couple of situations that because of schedule we have to actually fly to Spain to bring the sensors that have been built there, fly them in an airplane, buy a special seat for those sensors because nobody can touch them. They have to be extremely clean so that they don't bring any bacteria from Earth into Mars. So they had been uh, packed up very carefully after having been disinfected and then they were disinfected and clean again here in the United States before launch. So what else can I tell you? That the um, that the water that I was referring to is very little on Mars because the atmosphere is, is very thin but it is there so we're trying to measure that and how it changes throughout the day. We try to understand all of these questions and the more we understand the more questions we ask so it seems like a never-ending um, endeavor driven by our curiosity which in the end is about understanding our own planet our own universe and ourselves bye